All right, guys, today we're going to be killing two birds with one stone. Talking about one of the most rad knives, fixed blades that I like to run for EDC, and at the same time talking about half face blades and whether or not I think it's all hype. Now, if you guys have been in the knife community in general, whether outdoors or EDC, you guys have probably seen a few half face blades or HFB, different blades floating around. Now, they do have and kind of specialize in outdoor blades more than EDC knives, primarily with their like feather light and disaster disaster junior knives being really hard to use kind of tactical slash outdoor blades and i do not have any experience with those guys at the moment primarily because they're expensive and primarily because even if they aren't expensive they're very hard to find and the secondary market is rough on them but anyways this is one that i do have and this is the extremist mark one by half face blades and this is one that they kind of make in drops this of course itself being a limited edition drop with the red and black g10 s45 vn blade steel so this guy i've been running for a little while and ultimately i thought i would kind of discuss what i think about it what i like about it and if the brand overall is just hype now as always guys please don't forget to comment like share subscribe check out the patreon the instagram all that fun stuff the support is really appreciated and now let's talk about this knife so first off i have to say that this blade uh, probably might look a little bit small for some people but i really think that it is just about perfect for everyday carry primarily because i think that the overall intended use for this knife really is more uh, kind of ut utility and also defensive. And I think that this blade can be pushed into either quite nicely. It has a really steeply recurved blade with kind of a uh, almost kind of tanto styled tip. It definitely has a nice swedge on the back that is very thin and is very piercy. Now this blade is also kind of spear pointed because the tip is in the center or kind of runs a straight line back to the handle itself or the center line of the handle. So kind of spear pointed in a way. And uh, this handle is very deep, has very deep finger and kind of are just overall finger grooves really to lock in some pretty aggressive jimping on the back. So if you do have to stab, whether with an ice pick style grip or with a forward grip, it is definitely going to lock you in. You're going to get lots of traction and lots of ability to stab. And so I think that this blade is really good for uh, self-defense. Once again, strong slashing abilities with the recurve edge and strong piercing abilities with that kind of spear point slash tanto style tip now also with really good ergos now i do think too outside of that self-defense application this is just a really solid knife for general utility purposes i do wish that the uh, grind was a little bit higher to uh, get a little bit slicier edge but the bevel is pretty large and it is definitely very sharp and it slices things just fine now for edc i don't tend to hard use my knives as much so primarily just tasks like opening packages and stuff like that is what this blade has done but for me overall it has been pretty good and i'm definitely going to use it in more uh, outdoor tasks throughout its life now, I think that that's a lot of the good for it. I will say, I think that the price and availability of half face blades are a little bit on the unfortunate side. And as far as the hype goes, so before we get into the kind of downsides, I want to talk a little bit about the hype of this knife. Now, I will say, I think the biggest thing that I dislike when it comes to half face blades is I've known this recurrent trend, or there's been this kind of recurrent trend in the knife community as a whole, where knife companies like Montana Knife Company, half face blades, uh, and all of them will make really quality knives. Like these are good knives, don't get me wrong. If you get a Montana Knife Company blade, you get a half face blade. Uh, they are great knives. They look beautiful. They perform very well and you will not be disappointed however i think these companies artificially make low numbers of knives to drive the prices up on their knives by creating a artificially high demand so they knowingly make less knives than they really uh, know that they can sell so those knives sell out really fast and for higher prices and of course the resale market on these is absolutely atrocious this knife here is a if you bought it straight from half face blades is 350 dollars roughly and uh, if you were to go and find this online you can't really find this exact one because once again this is a limited edition but knives comparable to this are going for around 600 dollars so realistically the aftermarket on these is near double what the uh, they actually sell for and so 
you know, that is a bit of a problem when you have, you know, this knife company that makes artificially low numbers of knives to keep prices high and, you know, they are bankrolling on the materials because I'm not going to say G10, Kydex, uh, Ulti Clips, or the steel itself, CPM S35, S45, and 3V, which are their primary steels they use. Those are not cheap steels, but at the same time too, there are knives that come in regularly for about $150 to $200 using all of the same materials. Now they are different designs and once again you know some may argue that this um, blade shape is you know definitely unique and definitely more expensive to produce and it definitely is because it is a dual angle grind but at the same time too definitely does not justify the already inflated prices and it definitely does not justify the aftermarket prices on these. Now it's cool that this is my most expensive fixed blade but at the same time too this being the most expensive fixed blade in my collection even more expensive than my Chris Reeve Pacific is a little bit staggering because this is a reasonably tiny blade. I mean, it's an under nine inch overall length knife. Now, for me, in my opinion, when I first got this knife, I was like, for $350, especially for $600, this thing better knock my socks off. And as far as the actual blade goes, I was pretty darn impressed. I really do like it. The fit and finish is fantastic, and I think the people over at Half Ace Blades do a pretty darn excellent job with the execution of the knife. It feels comfortable in hand, no hot spots or anything like that. The biggest issue I had with this knife was its sheath. Now, this is how it came straight stock there are no modifications to the sheath and overall the biggest things that I really dislike about this sheath is one I think the whole setup here is just a little weird I wish that this knife being as small as it was it's already very well set up for being a neck knife so the fact that it doesn't have a good option to run a neck knife like necklace through is a really big turn off for me I really dislike that because you really only have these two holes to work with Secondly, too, they also pretty much deleted the thumb ramp off of the back of this. You guys can see where they specifically cut the Kydex uh, right there so that there is no thumb ramp. And so to show you guys like another Kydex sheath here that I think is pretty well or pretty well executed, you have a really nice big thumb ramp to push off from. And so that is what I wish this knife had and I know that they're going for you know minimal low profile kind of high speed low drag so that it's easier to conceal but at the same time too in my opinion um, pulling out a knife especially surreptitiously can also be very important in defensive situations so having a thumb ramp allows you to just pop the knife out of its retention draw it quietly or with minimal movement and then potentially launch an attack if need be and so removing that thumb ramp I think is kind of just a blunder because uh, there's no reason for me there's really no tangible reason to take off the thumb ramp and I'll show you guys what this actually looks like in practice um, this is what it looks like and so overall there's no thumb ramp and no easy way to push this knife out like you cannot push this knife out of its sheath unless the only thing that I've kind of developed a habit is that they kind of have these flared sides on it so sometimes if I really do need to push it out I'll kind of half push it that way but because of this uh, recurve style in the sheath if you just push it like that it angles the knife downward like this and binds up right about here on the blade so you will have to at some point pull it physically out of the sheath or pull the sheath away but I really wish that they just added a thumb ramp the other thing I dislike is once again kind of going back to the fact that there's no holes on the top for necklaces they um, just ground this down to make it a little bit more minimal and low profile and so overall just not super pleased with the kydex sheath I think it was kind of um, lacking in a few ways Ways. and I think that you know if you're going for a discreet neck knife style knife or you know small of back blade carry uh, I would definitely recommend changing those few things about it because there's really no reason for there not to be a thumb ramp at least at that uh, especially on a high high end knife like this that is so well purpose driven to be a defensive knife in my opinion um, so that's what I think about the knife I still carry it I still like the knife I think it's a really fun knife to use I love looking at it it's a very attractive knife if you will but I definitely think that half face blades is overhyped and I think that their practice at least in my opinion and from what I've noticed is I think their practice is to make you know very few knives 
knives and not necessarily like a few knives, like a couple, but they make maybe 200 knives in a batch, really hype it up on places like Instagram and Facebook and, you know, artificially make those lower numbers, drive demand way up. And so that the demand is willing to pay uh, the exorbitant prices that they want for those knives. Now, once again, as far as a business model goes, that is up to them. I'm not going to judge them for saying that because, or judge them for what they're doing, because ultimately, if people are crazy enough to spend that much money, then they get to charge, then, uh, then Half Face Blades gets to charge whatever they want for their product. So long as people are willing to buy it, they can charge whatever they want. So from kind of an ethical standpoint, uh, you know, they can do as they please, but from my personal opinion, I probably won't be adding a lot of half face blades to my collection for a similar reason that I don't own any Montana Knife Company blades, because I look at the product and I think that the product itself, while quality, is nowhere near what they're asking. And I can see clearly and blatantly that places like Montana Knife Company are artificially driving demand by creating lower supplies. So you have some knife companies such as Chris Reeve, where you can pre-order knives and wait a few years. And that's more justified because they have such a high demand that they're trying to make as many knives uh, around the clock. But they aren't, you know, releasing limited drops uh, to try to drive demand way up and try to charge higher prices. Now, granted, Chris Reeve does charge pretty high prices, and that's a different discussion for a different time. But anyways, guys, that is what I think about half face blades, and that is what I think about carrying my Extremis Mark I. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.